if I had to pick one sentimentally, would be the portrait of my father uh, and the temple and his house in Tapa. Okay. Hi. Hi. Father. Nice to meet you. Welcome. This is your house. This is my life, my house. And though it doesn't belong to us anymore, every time we pass through this place, we stop here. And you're right next to the temple. Temple, yeah. Oh. We used to go there every Friday. And I learned the rudiments of Hinduism there. The, the starting point for the exhibition, really, Finding Graceland, was really in tracing kind of the roots of my ancestors, was really the start at my father's house, mm. right? And I painted him standing outside the house, uh, looking at the temple. The two were so connected, uh, such a strong part of their daily lives. It's amazing what the imagination as a child yeah. just take you into a whole different world. The thing I found about my dad, talk about imagination, when he can't remember stuff, he just makes it up. That's... He makes it up. And that, that's what lengths so much breath to the work. You know, because I... Wait, he, hang on. Is that true? Is that madness. true? Do you make things up? Uh, they are credible. They're credible. Yeah, yeah. See? They're incredible in your mind, yes. But, and he but, believed it. Whole hook, line, and sinker. He believed it. So I you never fell believed for it. it. I, no, I didn't fall for it, but I used it in the work. And I think it's that level of madness in the work that appeals to people, you know? Apart from people, what Anna looks out for on these trips are places. Landmarks that celebrate the quirkier qualities of Perak. But wait, wait, wait. It is leaning. It's leaning. That's why it's the leaning tower of Telemansen, built in the late 1800s by an eccentric Chinese millionaire for no apparent reason, really. <laughs> it's so random. Yes, it is. What's it doing here? And that's its wonder, I think. The fact that it makes no sense. As well as anomalies, Anu's work features familiar hubs of storytelling in the everyday life of these Kinta Valley towns. Yeah, shaking a hand. I'm not shaking. It's steady. Okay. Steady, steady, it's steady. It's me who's shaking. Steady. I'm frightened. <laughs> hey, don't slip on my sweat and slip my throat, okay? Does that hurt? Ah, oh, such a wuss you are. I'm not a wuss. You better get there now. There, I cleaned yeah. that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See? It's good. It's good. This barber shop hmm. has been around all this while. It's all, yeah. It's been, he said, 60 years. And those days, Telekintan was a very small town. So all of us used to come down here to have our hat cut. See, the thing is, the barber shop also becomes a place where you find out what's really happening elsewhere. So it's a happening place. Uncle, hmm. what about the, the clubs? Huh? You all had yes. quite a party life here, right? There was a lot of social activity that way. And he calls it whole... social activity. Yeah, 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 social activity. <laughs> yeah, it was you were the hip yeah. shakers, weren't you? <laughs> it's okay, you can tell yeah, me. Yeah, I know. We're in a barber shop. <laughs> Perak has got a lot of extra things. Yeah. <laughs> there was an eccentricity mm -hmm. about the people who lived here. I it's, imagine it's limitless. It's limitless. I think it's limitless. Uh, people from other states, of course, will shout at me and say, rubbish, we have it too. But I don't think so. I think we've got the best stories. The stories are happening while I'm driving. The narrative is such a strong part of the work. They become like your friends, really. Yeah. They're protagonists and the characters in the paintings as well. It's so random to have a fortune teller by the road. I know, it's quite fantastic. The really fascinating thing is that we are such a superstitious bunch, Malaysians, that if you come here earlier, there'll be Chinese aunties, and then there'll be plantation workers just stop suddenly to get a reading, okay? So it's like a drive-in fortune teller. There, you see what I mean? There's another guy coming now. He's a lorry driver. Hi, boss. My number. You got a lambo? Ah, start driving now. Good luck. <laughs> How does it work? He reads one numerology, yeah. and then he reads your hand as well. OK. Getting worried now. He's very intense. Stay away from people who are born in the year of the cow. They like to create trouble. So he says, Lari, Lari, Lari. If you see them, run, 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 okay? <laughs> Anyone in the year of the cow? Nanti ah, lu sulat kawin ke belum? Yes. Are you married that. or not? No. Which one do I marry? Okay, the horse, the rabbit? Or monkey ah? Monyet No, tiger. Oh, tiger. Mau kawin tiger. 
I got that. I've got to find myself a horse or a rabbit or a tiger. Ah, look, look, look. Ini mangki mana tolong lu. Ini, ini, ini. Ya, biar kawan pun boleh. Do you have a close ini, ini family friend who is a monkey? Very good for you. Tahun ini peranaknya no. lah. No, I don't have a monkey in my family. Tak ada lah. Tak ada. Kawan pun tak ada. Kawan pun tak ada. Kawan pun boleh lah. Anybody here hear the monkey? Anyone monkey? <laughs> No monkeys, no problem. There are always solutions in the line of luck. Oh, you have to keep an aquarium with yellow fish in it. That's it? Your life will be good, your numbers will, be, will come and your husband also will follow. Okay. All you need is a yellow fish in your house. Okay, I just need to look for a stallion, yeah. a rabbit, and a tiger. Yeah. Okay, and an aquarium with yellow fish and wear a ring on my middle finger yeah. on the right side. And I will live forever. Wow, there's more. I love this guy. Coming up, our road trip through Para takes us into some surprising artistic passages. Breathe in to the right and breathe out to the left. This is really weird, man, but I'll do it. I'm good for art. I'm back on the road with artist Jay Anu, exploring the real scenes that inspired his paintings on his home state, Para. Our mad ride through the Kinta Valley takes us off the beaten path through what was once the capital of the world's tin industry. This is the whole Kinta Valley area. Just tin mines everywhere, right? All the white sand is all basically old tin mines, really. Is that why they call it the Valley of Millionaires? Yes, Make yeah, definitely. Then? From from Kampa all the way to Ipo, right? It was all tin mines, tin tycoons, uh, the big British dredging firms as well, of course. From the late 1800s, Perak's tin industry boosted the economy of the entire British Empire driven by the Industrial Revolution's huge appetite. A century later, the world's tin market collapsed. But tin left its mark, and Anu believes that it never left Para completely. Today, relics from that era form characters in Anu's portraits of Perak. Look at that, some kind of mad dead beast, right? It's the last dredge in Malaysia, actually, not only Perak. And that was the inspiration for the Kinta Valley butterflies. They're monsters. Yeah, they are. They would eat you up and spit you out. The tin mines are done, but the places they spawn are still very much alive. Framed by the lush Banjaran Titiwangsa range, small towns in Kinta Valley are blessed with the fertile bounty of the hills. These crossroads in the hinterland form the colorful cultural entreports in Anu's work. Towns like Bidor bustle with fresh produce all year round. It's just an abundance in this village yeah. here. And have become favorite pit stops on Malaysia's culinary map. Can you smell it now? Ooh. But it tastes wonderful. This is the famous chicken biscuit. Yeah. This is the taste of my youth. Yeah. For Anu, places like this are an imperative part of his artistic process. It's all about the food. It basically used to be a food fest, huh? because you map your route by what to eat in each place. In the old roads, it'd take another 45 to an hour to get here, and then you'd stop again and eat again. Huh? It's like a so, food marathon Yes, yeah, a food marathon. And the paintings took on that sequence of things as well. Right. Because the places I remember best were always guided by the food we ate. Huh? So I worked hard at getting to this stage, really. Yeah. Of course. It hadn't happened naturally, Wait, but oh. have their duck soup. Is that what's famous oh, YouTube? Ah, man. This soup is so good. Wow. Mm. Food is not the only thing that maps Anu's roots. He's always on the lookout for religious places, particularly Hindu temples, which have a perennial presence in his paintings. The religious places are always landmarks for me. 
we have these intense connections with the place that we come from and the place that shapes how we think. I see the stories behind the people who come to the temple. The whole idea of identity is yeah. so intertwined with worship and religion that they have to be a part of our larger story. On road trips in search of subjects and settings to tell this story, Anu is always looking for interesting formations of art and culture that feature in Kerak's landscape. What an interesting temple. I know, built into the lime caves. And the caves, of course, are meant to have mystical qualities. But it's so unusual to have a temple in a cave. In a cave I've never yeah. seen one before. It's Fascinating. Right? Yeah. This temple is in Technicolor. It's so it vibrant is, it is. And, yeah. and full of life. I love the decoration of religion. Pestle pinks, pestle greens, pestle blues. Favorite temple colors. Mad and crazy, but it works when it comes together. <laughs> yeah. Even the limestone itself has been pinkified. <laughs> pinkified. <Yeah. laughs> That's the entry point into the labyrinth that goes into the caves. Amazing. Today, the limestone labyrinths of the Bandaran Titiwangsa range also harbor other types of sanctuaries. The Bunjaran Hot Springs Retreat is a well-crafted surprise, uniquely designed and built into the organic rock formations. I told you I'd wow, take you to paradise. Look at this, my God. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Mr. Sando. My gosh. Inside the walls are a series of passages and caverns decked out to create unique spaces applied with a whole range of therapy and healing options. Next, you are going to practice the single nostril breathing. Breathe in to the right. Breathe out to the left. Who would have thought we'd be breathing out of noses, all the nostrils together, okay? Yeah, eight months ago when I saw you on TV, I never would have thought, okay, we'll be one day breathing out of single nostrils together. This is really weird, man, but I'll do it. Okay. I'll do it for art. While Anu is drawn deeper into the caverns of creative contemplation, I step out to soak in the natural hot springs of the Banjaran. I would have never taken in the gorgeous landscape and rich cultural crossroads of Perak in quite the same weird and wonderful way if it had not been through Anu's art. It just made this road trip so beautifully trippy. Leaving Perak, I make my way down to Johor Bahru on the southern tip of Peninsula Malaysia. JB, for me it's always been a stop off for a quick bit of shopping and of course great food. But I've never ever stopped to take a moment and look at the finer details. JB is home base for one of Malaysia's most accomplished fine artists, the undisputed master of stunning photorealist paintings. Even with the seemingly simple, his subjects and settings carry such strong psychological and cinematic qualities. Beneath the busy beats of JB, Ahmad Zaki Anwar finds the quiet spaces that inspire such awesome works of art. So you've lived most of your life in Johor? Yeah, I've chose to live in Johor because this is where I grew up, you know? I don't know, this is home. There's nothing like home. Yeah, there's nothing like home. What an amazing structure. This yeah. was your school? Yeah, this was my old religious school. Wow. It, it probably dates back to the 20s, 30s. This was my classroom. And you've painted this before? Yeah, it's one of the few series I did that particularly identified Johor. Various things can trigger an image, you know? Um, that initial thing that I saw produces in me a rasa. Okay, uh, taste. Yeah, it's much deeper than a taste. It's, it's a sensory yeah, experience. Mm, this place holds something much more subliminal for me. Definitely sensing it. Yeah. 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 
Zaki is renowned for his sharp skills and superb command of media, which he nurtures both on and off the canvas, like with his collection of the deadly Malay dagger, called the Chris. Just takes off that coat of rust yeah. immediately. Yeah. And this is how you, they've done it for hundreds of years. You see? You just brought it back to life. Yeah. <laughs> what do you like about these Chris's? I think it's, it's the combination of beauty. You know, I mean, some of these blades are incredibly beautiful. Look at that, you know? Yeah, it's stunning. It's an art form, isn't it? Mm. But at the same time, it's, it's meant for killing, you know? You, you have this contradiction, you know, something so beautiful and yet so deadly. I, I, I think that's what is interesting about the Chris. You know, I mean, there are a lot of weapons, yeah? but somehow the Chris has a um, certain rawness, you know? It's, it's primitiveness, I think that's what attracts me, you know? It's, it, it's, it's open more for interpretation and, 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 and stories and myth. In Malay, it's called a smangat. The spirit. It's much more than the spirit. A smangat is something which uplifts you, a sp an uplifting spirit. Mm. Zaki draws from diverse influences that help him hone his work to perfection with an intense focus on precision. In Islamic calligraphy, if an alif is supposed to be written like that, you have to write it like that. You can't improvise, basically. You know, there's no freestyle. Yeah. So it's an exact art form. So there is no room for mistakes. No room for mistake. That's when the chuckles came about, you know? Yeah. This total precision. Without, with, with no room for, for mistakes, for chance, you know? Yeah. Uh, total awareness of exactly what you want to achieve, you know? Control as well. Yeah, control, you know? So the Chaco series is all about that, actually. Precision, control. Oh, can I do that? Can I do that? Coming up, my passage takes me into a masterclass of Chaco, where keeping precision and control is not so easy when you're getting mixed up with a messy medium. And I feel like down and dirty. <laughs> In Johor Bahru, the final stretch of my fascinating journey with Malaysia's leading artists lands me in a masterclass with the finest commander of charcoal. Okay, here's the gallery. Ah, oh, there we go. Zaki Anwar opens the doors to a creative treasure trove of huge portraits executed with stunning photorealist detail and precision. So this is your studio? Yeah, this is a studio and I'm working on a drawing now. Wow. Yeah. But it starts with the size. How do you decide that? When I see an image in my head, I see that image in terms of size, you know, because the scale will, will determine how the audience, how the viewer will, will, will engage with the work. How will I will engage with the work. If it's small charcoal, I'll use my fingers, you know, like that. Yeah. But if it's a big charcoal, I'll use the palm of my hands here. The big animals, I use this, you know? You use every body part yeah, of Yeah, yeah. Wow. The point is that this transference of energy has to be proportionate. What can I do? How can I assist you? With the chuckle stick, like that. Oh, can I do that? Can I do that? Oh, this is fun. So, here. Oh, let me do that, let me do that. Yeah. Oh, okay. cool. You know? And then you bring it in, you know? What's lovely about charcoal is that you really feel it. Yeah, it's a very intimate process, really, you know? Yeah. I'm feeling it, you know, I'm feeling the contours. As my fingers go across the, the, the face, you know, I sort of imagine that I'm feeling it, that, that it's like three-dimensional, you know? For the, for the parts that needs a fine touch, you use your fingers. Okay, Denise, feel his lips. <laughs> We're getting messy here in the studio, and I'm having so much fun. Okay. Like... So you can go right up to here. What I like about Chaco is that I have this very strong connection with what I'm using, and I feel like down and dirty. <laughs> Chaco is 
primal. It's primitive almost. Just charcoal and your fingers, you know. When you're doing realistic work, I, I would try to keep it as precise as possible. It's a very strange thing, you know, between being precise but at the same time not really conscious of the action. But it comes with experience though, yeah. just like you said with your artist calligrapher. Yeah. All right, on that note, I'm going to leave you <laughs> to your mastery because I think that okay. the rest is in your hands. Okay, thank you, Denise. <laughs>With me out of the way, Zaki takes over, riding a wave of creative energy with perfect control. It's yeah. great, Zaki. Mm. It looks awesome. How do you know when it's done? When my heart s skips a beat, you know? Right now, probably need a bit of fine tune, but I think it's almost there. Yeah, time for Tetarek, hey? Yeah, time for Tetarek. My masterclass with Zaki was the perfect way to wrap up this passage. Come on, guys! Traveling through Malaysia through the eyes of its leading artists was a fascinating adventure into a rich canvas. Beautiful. Returning to the shorelines of the East Coast, I discovered more ways to soak in the splendid details. <laughs> Tripping through Perak took me off the beaten track. But wait, 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 it is leaning into the colorful heartlands where life does imitate art. No, I don't have a monkey in my family. This journey through Malaysia, out and about, has been like painting the perfect mistake. It's all about perfect mistakes. <laughs> you could come back here again and again, but every time experience something completely new. I'm Denise Keller, and this is my passage to Malaysia!